Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is, well, post-holiday season. I hope you had a good one. Today is December the 28th and it's 4 p.m. EST time right here. And I'm back again on a Monday discussing Martin guitars. Today is a guitar that I have not yet played, which is always exciting for me to learn about a new model. And this is the Martin DSS-17 Whiskey Sunset guitar. And I have to wonder why we're looking at a guitar called the Whiskey Sunset. Maury, is this because you get an excuse to drink whiskey today? That's exactly right. Uh, I've been drinking whiskey since 10.30. I'm um, going to do my best to stay awake for most of this program. It's, uh, it's probably what gets me through the Monday, if you want my honest opinion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever reason is good, right? Um, i got to say, I'm impressed already. The guitar sounds great in that intro, and I look forward to learning all about it. So I hope you've been doing your homework, because I have several questions to ask you about it. But before we do that, let's uh, say hi to our friends in the chat. If you're in the chat, do let us know where you're watching from, and if you've got any nice gifts over the holiday season, especially guitar-related ones. Bob Dobson is here. The world-famous Sasquatch and I are live from the winter forest of Washington State. And we really want to hear about that DSS-17, what it can do. Headphones on and harmonicas at the ready. Hello, Aaron and Maury. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Pick up a pair of these headphones, these in-ear monitors, then you hear the same sound that I hear. They're really great. Uh, Patsy Smith says, watching from Suffolk, UK. Roweth is watching from Cleveland. Excited to hear about the DSS-17. Hi, everybody. Don Martin, we're, we're all very jealous of your name, Don. I want your name. <laughs> Don Martin. D. Martin. <laughs> Hi, Aaron and Maury. I'm looking forward to hearing about this guitar. I think we all are. This is, this is a very interesting one. Hi, John Spark is here. Nice to see you again. I just saw you yesterday at my live stream. It says, have you got the Whiskey Sunset or the Black Smoke, Martin, Aaron? I haven't owned or own either of them, but I've always heard good things about these guitars. So I'm hoping to find out why today. Bernard Smith says, watching from England, drinking tea from my sound hole sniffer mug, which I have right here. Mine's got a coffee stain on the top. Can you see my coffee stain? I should have, I should have washed this before I came live. <laughs> so cheers, everyone. I'll put a link to get your sound hole sniffer merch in the chat in a little bit. Uh, Michael is here. Hi, Michael. Great to see you as always. Awesome. Uh, never miss it. So a fan of this guitar. Undervalued, he says. Hmm. Okay, we'll see. We, I, shall, uh, I shall find out. We shall discover today. Jack Wickwire says, hi, everybody. And Steve says, greetings from Derby. Uh, I thought this guy was an intro to the show. Yes, he is. This guy is Maury. He's the owner of Maury. <laughs> this guy, I like it. He's the owner of Maury's Music. He's my guest today. I, I guess uh, John is new to the show. So this is Maury's store. He's beaming in live from his store. And he has all these amazing Martin guitars. So what we do is we go virtually into his shop because he won't allow me in there to put my fingerprints on all the guitars. And then he'll play the guitar on the stream and I will grill him about said guitar. And you're welcome to do it as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's getting nervous. Steve is drinking French wine. Sacre bleu. Ooh, ooh la la. <laughs> That's as far as our French goes. Sorry, we need Kooky, <laughs> we need Kooky here to help us out. Right. Um, hey, Bimo in the house. He says, hi, everybody. Philip Watson, all our regular friends are here. Awesome. Hi, Phil. Uh, Don Martin's in New Jersey. Uh, DM says, you guys swap positions. I'm not sure how... We, no, we, we didn't because I always go on the left because my logo is on the left, right? Oh, no, you're... Now I I'm don't know. Now I'm confused. I'm embarrassed that I don't know that. Are you sure we swapped DM, or have you been drinking the Whiskey Sunset? That's the question. <laughs> uh, Don Martin says, unfortunately, I'm no relation to Martin. Ah, oh, still a cool name to have for a Martin fan. Yeah. Um, Chris Hull says, I love the open pour mahogany back and sides. Maury, talk about how light that sucker is. I'm in Tennessee. Okay, we'll get to that real soon, Chris. I have so many questions about this one. Mark Brogan says, greetings from Scotland. Awesome. Uh, Kuki's here from France. Bonjour, Kuki. And uh, Kuki got his wish. Last week we had the Martin Custom Shop on, which is a fantastic episode. Thanks to Maury for inviting them on, and thanks to Martin for coming on the show. Wow. That was so cool. And if you missed the episode, latest night, you can go and watch it again on the replay. 
and uh, our friend Kuki was suggesting a Gibson style custom could be uh, in his future. This guitar looks a little bit like a Gibson maybe, Kuki. Perhaps you uh, might be interested in one of these, we'll see. <laughs> Olds is here from upstate New York. Jim McCurry, happy holidays from Quaker Town, PA. Oh, are you close to the factory? That's cool. Ooh, Marco, oh, really? Marco Godso, hello guys. Is it last time this year? Great guitar, by the way. Let's learn about it. Awesome. Uh, Steve says we met in New York last year. Now I feel terrible because I never remember. <laughs> me, or, me or Maury? Oh, oh. That, tell, tell me more. Tell me more. Mm. Um, Old says we switched. Really? Why would I be on the right if my logo's on the left? I don't know. Okay, well, I guess this is better then. This is better, so. Oh, I think last week, because we had the three of us. Let me just see. Oh, yeah, well, I'll look later. Uh, it's fine. You know what? A change is as good as a holiday anyway. That's what they say in England. Um, John says, what's the range of a Gibson Les Paul? Do you know the answer to that, Maury? No. <laughs> You're asking the wrong I'm people. I'm not sure right? I understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> I think John means what's the price, but he's in England anyway, so Maury oh. can't help you with that, unfortunately. He's in the good old USA. Mark Johnson says, very nix. Is that a sports thing? I'm not doing very well in this intro, am I? And, uh, oh no, John's was a joke. Because in what's the range of a guitar means how much does it cost? And then he said that means how, how far can you throw it? It's... it's uh, I th ah. John, John, are you in England? That seems like a, a very kind of British humor to me, being a Brit. I don't know, I might be wrong. Uh, Mark Johnson says, very nice guitar. I have one, bought a week ago. Oh, great. DSS 7. 7? Nice. You mean 17? That's cool. So if you own one of these guitars, then let us know what it's like to play in person, please. And then Chris says, we swapped a few weeks ago with the new graphics. Okay, okay. That would make sense. Kuki says the DSS-17 is a J45 killer. Mm, lots of Gibson references today, Maury. Uh, we'll be uh, on, that, on that train today. Uh, <laughs> Jim McCurry says Quaker Town is less than one hour from Nas Martin. It looks a certain way. When you make it a 12 fret, they actually elongate the upper bout to make it meet the neck. This has a little bit of that. So it's just that the, the shoulders, uh, this, part of the, this part of the guitar, it's, it's basically just a slope. And that's where the DSS comes from. The 17 is the series. And the Whiskey Sunset, you guessed it, uh, this guitar comes either in a black finish or the Whiskey Sunset finish. And this guitar is the D Slope Shoulder 17 with the Whiskey Sunset top. Mm. So the Whiskey Sunset is the finish, right? Yes. And the other available finish is the Black Smoke. Is that correct? Yep. Black okay. Smoke. And it really, it's a very translucent black uh, when they have those guitars. You can see right through the finish in both cases, but the black especially, you can see all the pores. Okay, awesome. Um, so slope shoulder, let's just talk about that for a second. Hang on. Um, the slope shoulder thing. Can you tell me about that? Because I'm, I've, I've I'm not that familiar with it. So is this something that came from Martin or Gibson or what's the history of the slope shoulder guitar? Uh, well, the history lesson part of it, I'm not entirely sure. I do remember uh, a lot of Gibson fans, uh, you know, speaking of that. I wouldn't be surprised, but don't uh, don't quote me. Uh, I think of Gibson more than I think of Martin when I think of Slope Shoulder Dreadnoughts. Is that entirely uh, historically accurate? I'm not sure, but I'm not I'm not really the one to, to tell uh, how it, you know how that arrived on this specific model. But I do think of Gibson more than I think of Martin when that's that's mentioned. Hmm. Um, Maury, I'm going to ask you to turn off the noise gate because we're getting a little bit of a, a bleed through there. So it's a start. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, cool, cool. So let's go. I think we should go through the specs of the guitar to start with. Uh, Jeff says a very attractive guitar. Black Smoke is nice as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, let's jump over to the Martin uh, website. Question from Don Martin. Is this guitar thinner than a D18? Uh, not not thinner in, in, in thickness here. Uh, the finish is thinner. It's, it's, if there's any finish here, you can't even tell. But as far as the dimensions, this guitar is as deep as a traditional D18. Yeah, I've got my, my, my body size chart here, which I love referring to. So this is essentially a full size dreadnought. Am I right? Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, actually, I have it on there. You can't read, I apologize, you can't see this uh, text very well on this image. It's kind of low quality. But if you look to the far right, there's the Jumbo, which, which we've had on recently. 
Then there's the sloped shoulder dreadnought, and then there's the dreadnought guitar right there. So it's, and it's not, I think we were asking, is it one of those thinner? Because Martin been doing some thinner body guitars lately, which um, I like the full size ones. Of course, it comes down to comfort and everything else, but I'm glad actually this is a, a full size dread. I think that's really cool. Mm. All right, I'm gonna jump over to my desktop here. All right, let's go through this together. Let me just make sure you can see this on the screen. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's come down here. So it's a D14 fret slope shoulder, which you've already kindly told us. A simple dovetail neck joint, X brace, scallop bracing, of course. Uh, we come to expect the X bracing. It's a Sitka top, okay, a mahogany back and side. So it does share some kind of similarities with the D18 in that respect, right? Okay. But unlike many Martin guitars, uh, you know, especially the standard series with their gloss finish, this is a satin finished guitar. And some say that the satin finish allows the sound to breathe a bit more. We'll have to discuss that in a bit, uh, whether we like the satin finish. What do you think in the chat of a satin finish? Can you let us know what you think of that? please, and we'll discuss that in a bit, because that's obviously a key thing about this model. The scale length is 25.4 inches, and this is a one and three quarter inch width at the nut. Okay. The next shape is a modified low oval. The taper is high performance taper, and electronics are optional. So yeah, pretty, pretty kind of good choice. If you're considering a D18, this could be uh, a consideration, couldn't it? It's like a slightly different version of a D18, maybe. Unless, unless the um, bracing and things are different. I'm not, I haven't got to that yet. But from that, from those specs, it's kind of a little bit close. We have the Tordus pickguard. It, it's, it's a great looking guitar for sure. And we've got the drop-in saddle. The bridge material is rosewood. Um, plastic bridge pins as always. Saddle is bone, very nice. Uh, Sitka spruce, dark mahogany color, yep, okay. And let's go through the rest here. I want to know what, I do want to know what the tuners are. It says golden age relic nickel. And the knobs are a cream plastic. The nut is bone. Okay, I think the specs are pretty darn good. So let's take a close up look at this. I have some nice pictures here. Okay. So it looks great. Now, okay, let's talk about that satin finish then. What do you think of the satin finish? What are your thoughts, Maury? Well, it's a, it's a trade-off. I think it's a little bit more delicate. It definitely will not hold up as well to uh, the occasional you know, scratches and nicks and dents. It's not as protective, but it does completely uh, result in a very, very open, uh, very punchy sound. It's on paper, you might think this has more in common with the D18 uh, than it actually sounds like. And I really do believe um, as much as the slope shoulder is the difference, I think the thin finish to my ears, really makes this guitar very loud in the mid-range. Um, it's not necessarily tinny, but where I think a D18 has some good, like, low mid-range growl, uh, this guitar's power is in the upper mid-range without sounding honky or boxy. It, it's just, it's a very, very, a punch is, is the word I think of. We've seen a lot of these come through the shop, and it's, it's just, if you take a pick to it and, and start strumming, it just, it's got a powerful punch uh, that you know, might be lacking a little bit of bass for some players, but I think the satin finish sounds very, very responsive. Not just that it breathes, but if you, I, I suspect if you would take the the same approach and make a satin finish D18, uh, you'll arrive at the same conclusion. But the satin finish on this is extremely attractive to me sonically, uh, if not for just being a little bit less protective uh, of the elements. So the guitar that I was playing on my stream yesterday was a Cole Clark. And if you watch their marketing material, they will say they don't use the gloss finish because it sounds better. Like the gloss kind of traps the tone in. And I don't, I mean, I, I that's something that we'd have to investigate in the future. I, I have no thoughts on that. One thing I do notice about the satin, I do like satin because gloss can easily scratch and everything else. But the thing about satin is if you strum, it can make some noise. You know, the way the arm would rub against the satin can make some excess noise have you noticed that playing the guitar yourself a little bit i i my playing style doesn't really make me do that as much as some other players uh just accidentally i'm not that i have great technique but the way that i play doesn't necessarily force that but yes if you know you hmm. you can it's almost like sandpaper you certainly can get that going 
um, and I, if this was my own, I would, you know, be a DJ and, and make some good sound. But it, yeah, that's it's definitely apparent, uh, not just on the on the top, but on the side as well. You know. Is that it's actually really really cool if you put like a K and K or a trance in there. If you put a pickup in there that picks up body sound, you can record that. So if you're a live looper, I did, <laughs> I did that a little bit yesterday. So I I did some I did the regular and then you can go. So yeah, nice. that that yeah. will come right if you put an anthem or a trance or something that picks up the body of the guitar. That will come huh. right through the loop. Now, okay, so as a as a as a as a pickup guy, <laughs> sounds weird. As a pickup guy, <laughs> that can be good or bad, and obviously in the studio it could be as well. Because if you want to loop that kind of sound, that's amazing. So Tommy Emmanuel actually deliberately um, goes through his finish in order to do that. So that could be amazing for that. But what you've got to watch out for is if you record a lot with a microphone, you could also pick up that sound. So it's just, it, it, it is what it is, but I just think it's worth mentioning. Um, let's, go, let's go to the chat and see what our friends think of this. Before we do that, can we just have a few, uh, some, some nice sort of low open chords? I want to hear the low end of the guitar. Sure. Oh my god! Yeah, let, let us. I mean, again, just let, let us know in the chat what you think about that. Well, these, these things, um, they interest me. I want to know if you like the satin finish. If those kind of things matter to you, it's interesting because the satin finish will also um, become shiny as you play it, whereas a shiny finish, a gloss finish, will become satin as you play it. It's interesting, and and the guitar that I was playing yesterday was a, a used guitar, and the person that had it before me obviously played it differently to me because you can see where their arm was resting on the guitar. So I like yeah. I, I like stuff like that. You know, it's cool. Um, I was just reading about sloped shoulder because I'm trying to get more educated on the whole sloped shoulder thing. But let's see what our friends think about this here. Going to come down to where we left off. So I heard the 17 series have a lot of punch and projection. I would agree with that. Sounds really powerful, I have to say. And they say, is it true? Especially discontinued long scale models. Oh, is this short scale or long scale? This is long scale. It is, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that yeah. power from this guitar. It, it sounds really powerful and I like that. It's got that, definitely got that mahogany sound and a lot of punch to it. Mm. Um, which is always impressive to me because it's not a standard series guitar, right? It's, uh, it's, no. uh, it's a 17, it sounds really good. Um, so Mark says, pretty sure Martin invented the sloped shoulder. I saw it on the factory tour. Not 100% sure, but Spoon... Can someone call Spoon Phillips, please? Uh, let, us, let us know about the sloped shoulder. I've never... <laughs> That'd be funny. I've never thought about it. I've never owned a sloped shoulder, and I've just never thought about why they were even designed that way. So definitely something to uh, put, in the, put on my book for research in the future, a sloped shoulder. So I didn't know a Martin came with it. Um, as, well, apart from the one-offs that I've seen, the kind of custom shops that I've seen, or the, the yeah. special editions that I've seen. Um, Kuki says, the Martin D1 Authentic, which was the early first dread, is a sloped shoulder. Okay. By the end of this episode, we're going to discover who invented the sloped shoulder. I need to know this. <laughs> Chris Hull says, I like gloss and satin. I would have to agree. They're just different. There's not a better, there's, there's not a better one. They're just different. Um, slope shoulder dreadnought I thought was the original 12 fret dreadnought body which Martin did create okay I'm a fan of I'm a fan of satin but open pore to me feels a bit too raw and then someone else said they like the open pore it was ordered by Ditson and made by Martin if I remember well hmm I'd like this so are we saying that Martin created the slope shoulder dreadnought before Gibson we're saying we think that's the case. I I, want, I wonder hmm. if that could be true, but somehow Gibson became popular for it. Exactly. Their, their models have it, right? So that's why we think of that, those. That's why I said, oh, it looks like a Gibson. 
But Chris Martin will always say at his talks how, you know, uh, Martin made the guitar and then Gibson made it and then Martin made it again. He'll, he'll say that quite a lot. So that would make sense <laughs> with this as well. Uh, Kuki says, you describe it well. And he agrees with you. It lacks bass for my taste. Hmm. Do you think there's less low end on this than a D18? I, I, I certainly, I hear a lot of mid-range punch myself. I just hear a lot of power. But how is, how is the low end yeah. in, in the room? To me, it, it's like the equalization we always talk about. When you take mm. an EQ, whether it's your home stereo or your car, if you boost the mids, you also have reduced the bass just by you know, cause and effect. I really think the good way to describe this is if you take a D18 or, or something like a, like a D28, the E is really the strongest note. Mm. On this guitar, it sounds like the G and the D is, is the loudest, and I don't want to mm. knock you over, but if I, if I just show you what I, what I think I'm hearing. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing too. Like the middle, middle of this voice is just so damn forward. Uh, I, to an extent, some guitars could almost sound like there's too much of a mid-range hump. Uh, mm. You guitar players would recognize a wah-wah pedal in the halfway position. It's not that, but there, it's, there's so much power in the middle of this voice that I, I could see why Kooky and some other people might hear that as a little bit of a push down on the bass. And it's, I don't think it's bass light, but it's just so mid-range heavy. Well, you're right. I always say if there is less bass, you by, de you by default, by definition, hear more mid-range. If you take away the bass, you hear more mids. If you add more bass, you hear less mids. So that would make sense. And that's the first thing I thought when you played it on the intro. I just thought that power, that, that, that punch in the face, really, really interesting. Um, so that would probably, probably be really good for like lead playing and stuff like that, I imagine. It's going right. to cut through a mix, which is why mid-range is so important for the mix, definitely. So uh, Phil Watson agrees with Remeth. And Kuki says, Martin satin neck finish eventually polished by... Yeah, we're saying that um, the... Uh, Roeth was saying that the finish goes glossy where your arm rests. And he's not a fan of that. The, the solution to that is you've got to play it all over the body, <laughs> all over the guitar. <laughs> then the whole thing will go glossy. And then Kooky <laughs> says it's like, it's like the satin neck. The neck of your Martin, if you notice, changes over time. From when, you, when you're playing it, it kind of glosses up. Uh, that's what happens with satin finish. It goes glossy. And that's, uh, it can also happen the other way around. The gloss finish can go satin because you're kind of wearing through the gloss. So this is just... This is just nature, isn't it, Maury? This is just what happens with wood over time. Uh, and he says, I suppose it gives it character. Kiki says, this one is very balanced. It doesn't lack bass, he says. So he's, given, he's endorsing this one. Um, once again, we're all, we all feel that the back of your head is on fire, Maury. <laughs> I don't know why Maury insists on having the humidifier behind his head I think he likes the, um, the smoke coming from his ears like he's really mad or something <laughs> it's, like, it's a cool conversation starter like when I think of math the smoke comes out this way yeah. and when I talk about guitars it just comes out the top yeah. <laughs> oh dear um, Chris says it doesn't seem to have forward shifted bracing that might be what makes the low end less growly so do you know what the bracing is on this Maury? Well, it is scalloped X bracing, but if they don't m mention forward shifted in, in, this, in the uh, specs, that's oh. probably true. It's probably standard location X bracing. Okay. So good, good. Um, you, know, you noticed that well. Um, slightly mid rangey, Chris. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to read Googie's comment. I'm just going to put it on the screen. Um, it sounds like it's price point, good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Watson, my D15M is sat, and then I worry about it getting shine as I play it. Is this? Is it? Have I, have I started a thing now? I mean, you know how fussy I am. That doesn't bother me that the my Cole Clark has that shine on it. It does have a shine on it, but I just figure that's just why. You know, there's no way that a satin finished guitar cannot cannot have that. At the same, but you could also worry that your gloss finished guitar is going to go dull over time as well. In fact, um, Scott, who had who had the guitar that I now have. He summed it up well He's in his, in his post. He said, um, it's weird how the glossy finish goes satin and the satin finish goes glossy over time. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it really... changes, yeah. Yeah, that really sums <laughs> it up well. There's just no way around any of that stuff, unfortunately. Um, 
Uh, Bemo says it sounds like a great a great price point. I agree. I see this a lot yeah. online that these guitars are a great um, a lot of guitar for the money is what people say, and I would I'd have to agree with that. It sounds like a great guitar, looks great, and uh, is more affordable than say the the standard series. Um, okay, good question from Kuki. What strings does it ship with? I will check the website. Uh, retros. Yeah, these are the retros. They're nickel. Ah. Yeah, he said, does it ship with the retro strings? And it mm -hmm. sure does. Okay, and what, and what gauge are they? Uh, I think 12s. Okay, so not, thir not, not, uh, nope. not 13s on I'm, that. Okay. I'm wrong, they are 13s. They felt like 12s, but they're 13s. Okay, so 13s. That, ex that explains it too. They have a lot of uh, big sound. And then... Bob says, is this body the same size as the DSS-15 mahogany? Yes. Yep. It is. Okay, thank you. That's a cool guitar too. Chris says, I think Gibson was first to have a 14 fret slope shoulder. Prior to that, slope shoulders were 12 fret guitars. Ah. And Kuki says, the J45 sounds differently anyway. It's not brace similar. Yeah, I agree with that. Very, very different build anyway. Um, and we, uh, like Phil says, we're just used to seeing that sloped shoulder on the Gibson. And then Jack said, "Oh, all guitar, all guitars were sloped shoulder until Martin came out with the fourteen fret guitar." Mm. Okay. See, I'm I'm learning so much from this. Thank you for your your help. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. And uh, da 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 da. Someone Googled it. That's, that's what I was hinting at earlier. Thank you for Googling. Martin, in 1916, developed the first slope shoulder dread sold as a Ditson, the Ditson, Ditson store brand. Okay. So I'm, I'm glad we had this conversation today because I feel like I, even though I've been around Martin guitars for so long, I still look at that guitar today and think, oh, they copied a Gibson. But this, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. They haven't. They made the slope shoulder first, but Gibson became more known for using it that's the answer right and that's exactly what chris will say at his workshops his uh, his um the lectures that he gives he'll, he'll say things like that i remember him saying that about the the guitar that i had what did i have from you the one that i sold the uh oh the hello kitty no i still ha i wouldn't sell the hello kitty maury that'd be crazy <laughs> <laughs> the um the little the little one the the, the one with the uh, addy top and the mahogany back co7 yeah, he was talking about that at a show last year. And he said the same thing. He said, that, that is Martin copying Gibson copying a Martin. I yeah. love that. I love yeah. that. I says, I, that's the second time I've said it, but I just love that uh, expression. Okay. Uh, Phil says, you can polish gloss, but not satin. True, but, you'll, but even gloss, I guess my point was that even gloss will go dull over time. So you kind of have the opposite problem. That's, that was kind of my point about it, I guess. Yeah. But it's a good question. I mean, how would you clean this guitar? We wouldn't. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, not trying to be smart, but it's it's one of those things that if you would, you know, play one of our gloss guitars and put a little smudge on it, we could clean it up and shine it up and it would blend right into the shiny top. Something happens on this and you want to clean the area. Now you've got a shiny blemished mm. area. Um, I, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's not nearly as easy as just taking... Uh, microfiber cloth to a gloss top. Uh, da, da, da. Ditson's for 12 fret. Gibson, okay, we have, we have clarity now. Thank you, everyone. The Ditson was a 12 fret sloped shoulder. I, I actually, I, I, why, why didn't I know this? I've seen this with, on the talk with um, Robert Getzel. We, we had this slide of this exact thing. The Ditson was a 12 fret uh, sloped shoulder. Gibson released the 14 fret jumbo models in 1934. That's what it was. Uh -huh. So Gibson made okay. the 14 fret slope shoulder, which they're now famous for. But now this is a slope shoulder from Martin. So it's just a bit of back and forth, if you like. Okay, awesome. Let's take a little break. Let's go to, over to the viewers' comments right now. Thank you so much to Becky, or Becca, sorry, Becky. So thank you so much for, for Becca for sending in a video. This is the first video that we've had on the show from one of our viewers. Hey, Becca. And I have to say, these videos are welcomed. Please send them to say hi at erinshortmusic.com. I'll put the address in the chat. 
So we're gonna um, I'm gonna mute us now and I'm gonna play a video. It's a little bit on the low low volume side. You might want to turn up slightly for this. Becca is gonna show us her Martin guitar, and I'm gonna play it right now. Here we go. Hey Aaron, it's Becca here with my 2001 D42. Give you a quick little spin. Am I doing it right, Maury? <laughs> you can see all the crap on my desk. <laughs> <clears throat> so I've had this guitar just over a year now. She's beaut. So I'm gonna play play a couple chords for you from some original music. Thanks for listening. See you later. Hey. Awesome. That deserves a round of applause, which I can never find. Here it is. <laughs> very, very cool. Thank you for being the first video, Becca. That's awesome. I would encourage anyone. I will accept photos of guitars. Playing the guitar is even better to set up your phone and make a video. Even just say hello to us. That would be awesome. I love getting, I mean, we've got, we've got so many people in the chat. It's fantastic. We have like 30 people in the chat and to have you actually on the screen with us as well is so awesome. So I put the address there. It's say hi at erinshortmusic.com and I just said, send me stuff. So yeah, I'll, see, I'll see what happens this week. Oh yes, yeah, she's awesome. Go and subscribe to her channel, please. It's Becca Jones, right, Maury? Becca Jones Music. And you Becca, should hear her yeah. voice. If you think her guitar sounds good, ooh. Yeah, she's really great, and, and she's been a friend since we started this show. So thank you for your support, Becca, and um, thanks for sending a video. That was so awesome. Okay, I'm going back to the chat again. Look out. And... <laughs> Run. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hull says it's still nitro. Martin Polish still works on it. Really? Oh, really? We better wow. just... Uh, We'll, we, I'm not down you, Chris, but I would want to just clarify that before I uh, tell anyone to do it. <laughs> just to cover myself, but uh, yeah, okay. And I'm just trying to think if, I mean, I've, I've had guitars, it's usually the Australian brand guitars don't have a finish on them, most of them in the standard series. And I just think I've never cleaned them. I never had to. So that's interesting. Yeah, you got, you got me on. thinking you, that. You, you've owned guitars you've never cleaned? From Australia, yeah, they're self they're self cleaning. Oh, <laughs> like an oven. <laughs> I honestly just have just never thought about it, and now you've got me thinking about it. I've never thought about this um, thing before with that. And I thought I, you thought about cleaning guitars all the time. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I really let me let me let me check this one here. I apologize. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> um, what I do is when I change the strings, which I just did on this one, 
I, uh, I, wipe, I clean it then. So obviously, I think in the past with, with satin finished guitars, if I've changed the strings and they were really dirty and it needed a clean, I think I've just used like a slightly damp um, piece of towel and very lightly cleaned it and then dried it after the fact. Uh, so yeah, it's actually a really great question. We, we were going we to do a whole video on cleaning guitars, weren't we? We should still do that because this, this, is a, this has brought up some good questions about what to use to clean yeah. stuff and how do you clean stuff and take care of it. I still want to get that one on the list. Don't worry, this is the last show of 2020, but we'll be entering 2021 and we have plenty of weeks next year to cover these, uh, these subjects. Yep. So that's good to know. Thank you, Chris. Awesome. Unless the network cancels us, we have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, well, who's the network? That's the question. <laughs> Mark Johnson says, the guitars Martin made with this vibe, nickel strings and retro tuners, etc., were sold in the 30s. Though Montgomery Wards and Sears from the catalog, this DSS-17 is reaching back to that era. Okay, cool. Cool. Kuki says, he loves the D42, don't we all? Wow. <laughs> that one's nicely played in as well. Thomas Moore said, nice D42. Wonders why the strap button is placed like that on the heel. Hmm. Well, I didn't notice that, but uh, yeah, there is, you know, people have the strap button in different places depending on who installed it. Here's my email again, please send me stuff. I've got a couple of weeks worth of stuff to go, but send me some pictures and videos. Doesn't even have to be your Martin, it could be your capo, your strings. Um, you can even send us a video of you cleaning your guitar. But give us a lesson in that, that'd be cool. <laughs> Kooky. Just noticed on YouTube today, John Mayer was playing an OM42 and not his signature. Mmm, scandalous. Very scan <laughs> scandalous. I, mean, I think he has a lot of guitars though, to be fair. Peter Gregg in the house. Happy Monday. Everyone looks and sounds great. Thanks, Peter. It means a lot coming from you. Thank you. Kooky enjoyed that video. Question from Peter Gregg. Do fretboards, or specifically fret height, often get adjusted, or is it a once in a great while thing? Is that for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, every time Peter comes into the chat, I want to get out of this chat and go watch Peter Gregg. Nothing against oh, him here, but Peter, Peter's <laughs> channel is so cool. And I, I'm just, I'm so enamored by cameras, and I think Peter does a great job. What I mean is, after this is over, and oh, I see yeah, okay. it through the whole right, way, okay. right. that's what I'll go do with my free time. So, hey, Peter. Okay. Um, really, the, the fretboard, uh, we're talking about cleaning a few minutes ago. You, you should clean the fretboard probably once a year, but adjusting the fret height isn't something that you do specifically, but you will make adjustments on the neck as needed. So, it's, it's a once in a while thing for most players, uh, and that's with the truss rod tool. And there's a lot of setup that goes into uh, maybe the seasons will change and, and the guitar's top will rise and fall with humidity. And sometimes that'll mean a neck adjustment. But it's not a very often thing. It's, it's, uh, conversely, I know a lot of players who, who go a couple years without needing to do anything. So it's, it's pretty rare. Um, Roeth says, I usually just wipe satin guitars with a dry microfiber cloth. Seem fine. That's, the, that's exactly what I do. I just use a dry, a dry cloth like that. And if there is some, 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 you know, some dirt from playing outside or something, then I would use a slightly damp cloth and then dry it off. So that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Thomas Moore says, I use Virtuoso polish and cleaners from Maury. So you sell that Maury, Virtuoso? Thank you very much, Tom. We do. And that's, that's a recommendation of mine. I love that stuff. Hmm. And Phil wants to hear the guitar. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to it right now. Phil's got three more comments. Hang on. I'm shocked a full scale dreadnought with 13s doesn't require a belly bridge. Any thoughts on that? Kooky uh, loves the virtuoso. And Steve Smith says it sounds fantastic. What, what does, can you just clarify that for me? The belly bridge, what does that mean? Well, the, there's a, there are a few different styles of bridge, <clears throat> bridges, excuse me, on Martin guitars. And a belly bridge is more substantial. And, it, you know, if you figure that the bridge is, is what is actually being glued to the top and then anchored to the bridge plate, this is just a very small bridge. And his comment just means the, the tension that happens on a long scale instrument and with 13s pulling against it, this is a little bit uh, of an anomaly. It's, it's not often that Martin makes such a small footprint of a bridge to hold everything in place. I'm not really sure of, uh, you know, how, how dangerous or flexible this is versus the old style, but this is definitely less of a bridge. 
I I don't want you to think I was being rude earlier, so I just want to show you what I what I was referencing on the screen here. This is what I use. I use the Marden Polish and Cleaner, and it says do not use polish on a satin finished instrument. So that's all. So this Virtuoso Cleaner you're talking about is that is that suggested to use on a satin finish? Well, it's technically just for virtuosos like Tom and myself. Oh, so I can't if use somebody, it. <laughs> if somebody like you would get a hold of it. Um, no, I, I'm being honest. I don't know. I don't really know that I would recommend any finish or any polish on, on satin instruments. It doesn't mean that, that Chris was wrong to say that. But in my experience, I've just always been afraid of shining, really, you know, just shining up the satin. Uh, I should go look into that. But. I've always recommended Virtuoso as, as one of a couple you know good products we sell that work great on gloss. So it, it's just what I'm comfortable with, and that I the knowledge I come from knowing about gloss, I'm just a little bit unsure of what to do with satin because it just doesn't come up. We'll, we'll definitely I'll put this into an episode in the near future, and um, I'm just reading on the Virtuoso website right now. Frequently asked questions. Can your products be used on satin finishes? Our products are not recommended for satin finishes. Most manufacturers recommend using a clean damp cloth to clean the satin finish. So that's what, I, that's, that's what I've been doing. So that's good to know. Okay. I just want to make sure we clarify that. Because what I don't want to do is for someone to go out and use a polish on their satin finished guitar and then blame me for using it. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I was trying to hint at. Fair so enough, yeah. 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 So do not use... Um, these products on the satin finish use a slightly damp cloth if you need to um, someone said I was using Virtuoso premium cleaner on my vintage instrument which was very dirty as I was rubbing I noticed the cloth was turning the same color as my guitar okay anyway <laughs> um, oh no they say it's a common thing on older guitars because the finish starts to wear off um, <laughs> but they say again, do not use our products on bare wood or unprotected paint or stain. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we clarified that just so no one damages any guitars out there because that would suck. Okay, um, now uh, for Philip Watson, wants to play the guitar. So we've, we've come to the conclusion this guitar has a very strong punch and mid-range, which is great for strumming and cutting through. I'd love to hear some single note stuff. I feel like the... The pickers would do well with this guitar. Can you play us some kind of like sing single note runs um, for this next demo, uh, Maury? Unprepared, sure. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> a very a very snappy response i think it's yeah whatever it lacks in the sub lows definitely does have a lot of like it just gets thrown right out of the sound i think yeah no i agree there's there's so much power in this if, if i was playing acoustically in a in a small acoustic um ensemble I, i'd want to play this guitar i think it's just got that power jack the rabbit is back been a long time my friend hey Yay. guys hope you had a great holiday Aaron Shop music maury i use um Oh, steel wool to unshine the backs of my guitar neck. Unshine, okay. And also the places off where it's got shiny from playing. Works good. Great tip from our friend Jack the Rabbit. Do go and uh, subscribe to his channel. He has some great content on there as well. Time um, out. You skipped over the choice to call that 4 aught or 4 o, didn't you? I did. <laughs> 4 aught. It just, it just doesn't sound right, okay. Triple aught. 4 aught. I caught you. Ought, 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 ought. <laughs> this sounds so weird. I want to, but then, but then four O sounds weird too. Four O, 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 O. I can't, I can't. You I can't. chickened out, and you were caught. Um, well, how, so how do you say it then? This is, this isn't a guitar we're talking about. This is steel wool. Oh. Zero, 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 zero. <laughs> so you don't know either, right? To be fair. Um, I'm watching for you. 
I, I just, I really shy away from doing things like that. I get to see myself doing something really bad to a guitar. I, I don't, I've got friends that have taken steel wool and kind of removed the gloss finish from a neck. But I don't know, yeah. I, I as, as I've often said on the channel, I kind of stay away from stuff like that. And uh, I just leave stuff au naturel, as Kooky would say. Um, he says, Maury is really on fire. Did not know this last time. Now I can. Uh, he can't stop watching your exhaust fumes. <laughs> I thought he meant my playing. Jeez. <laughs> that's what, that's what Maury was hoping we'd say. Jack said you're brave to bend those 13s. Yeah, 13s on a, on a you know, long scale um, guitar. Yeah. That's impressive. Brave or dumb. Can we take a close up? I want to see that, you know, you know how fascinating I am and, and with tuners. I want to see these tuners. I'm going to put you full screen. I want to see the back of that neck. Any wings, the tuners. No wings, right? Oh, have you had, have you had a guitar recently with wings from memory? Uh, n not on this program. I don't think so, but definitely never on camera. Wow. Kind of weird. I think Martin know how fussy I am. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That. It wouldn't bother me anyway, honestly. Um, the neck looks good. The back looks good. Yeah. The, very nice pieces of wood on this one, have to say. Yeah. Back and sides looks nice. Yeah. It looks really great. I'll just check the pick guard. Yes, I even look at the pick guard. I know. Don't we? Don't you? Looks great. The finish is cool. I do like the finish quite a lot. Actually. I, yeah. I like. I actually quite like this guitar quite a bit more than I thought I would. Like visually, it's awesome. Um, those are those tuners like the same as the ones on the CEO Seven. Uh, very similar. I'm not sure if they're exact, but it's the same look. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. I, I do like the, the um, vintage open back, but I think they go well with the look of the guitar. It's definitely got that vintage look. I like the, mm -hmm. I like the black um, uh, pegs as well. That's cool. And Don says, I think it's the same tuners as the CEO 7 and 9. Thomas Moore says, what's the top? It's a Sitka top, right? Yep. And then Thomas Moore said, I use steel wool on my fretboard to clean it and then oil it. Okay. That's cool. And it's even Jack said, you have to be very light with your touch. You don't want to remove the finish. So again, if you do any of these things on the... I should make it a disclaimer next week. Anything you do from the chat is nothing to do with me. And please call Maury's Music if anything goes wrong. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Be careful with those guitars. I've damaged guitars and it's not fun. Um... Kuki has a question about the factory for Maury. Do you know what the current um, status is there? Are they back to full production? What, what, do you, what do you know about what's happening at the factory right now? You're still muted, my friend. <laughs> that was great. That How was the best that? part of the show. <laughs> now, you'll, <laughs> now you'll never know what I was going to say. Uh, the oh, factory no. is, 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 is not quite back to 200%. They're, they're inching back towards that, and they've made strides, but they're not back to 100% yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Taylor makes a satin finish polish. Never use it, though, so use at your own risk. That's what we're all saying. Use at your own risk. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, my D15 will get lost in jam with other guitars, such as at NASFest. It can't keep up. Hmm. Okay. Mahogany that's top, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The mahogany, all mahogany guitars, that can happen. Taylor finish is not nitro. I think it's some kind of UV cured poly finish. Yeah, you, I would, you know what? I would always call the company on the phone and say to them, how do I clean this guitar with the model number and everything? And, and just be absolutely certain before you do anything. Um, and Taylor's is actually called a cleaner, not a polish. Okay. Ah. That's good to know. All right, I would like to hear some finger style on the guitar, if I may. Okay. I'm going to think of some finger style that goes well with fire. <laughs> For next week, I'm going to get some flames <laughs> yeah. that come up on the screen. Before the episode's over, I'll show you that. Uh, I'll get out of the way and you can see the humidifier so you're not afraid. <laughs>
It, it feels good, that round of applause, doesn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> it just adds Not so used much. To it. It's just great. Never uh, <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Philip Watson says, yes, the Colorado, Colorado Capo. If only I knew of, a, knew of a place to purchase such a device, it would be a wondrous occasion. Available at Maury's Music. Are they in stock right now, Maury? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, get your Colorado Capo for the new year. Please do. Bimo says, light my fire. If only we could play copyrighted material on this show, Bimo, we would <laughs> gladly play that for you. Um, <laughs> Cookie says, you're going to over, over humidify that guitar. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Never. Thomas Moore said, yeah, do you have any Colorado capos in stock? Yes, he does. Give him a call after the show and he will gladly provide. Cookie says, does the back of your shirt get wet from the humidifier? Nope. No. <laughs> now, now, very boring subject, but we should talk. It's very important, but boring subject. I just got a new humidifier, and it does not have a filter, and it has that kind of steam that comes out like yours. So, is, does yours ha not have a filter? Am I correct? Uh, for this one in this small room, it does not have a filter. Right. So we probably have the same one. I might bring it in here next week, and we can both have the the, the, the fumes. Ah, um, you should do that. It's cool. Okay. Quick thing about humidifiers, because it is really important to acoustic guitar players. I never had this one before. I've had the ones with the filters. The problem with the ones with the filters is they get expensive. And also those filters can get moldy if you don't change them enough, which is really bad for your health, of course. So we just got one that doesn't have a filter. I figured I'll save some money. And it's taller and it holds loads of water, so it's great. Does that steam that comes out, this is a serious question, does that steam, that, that mist that comes out, does it leave any kind of residue on anything in the room for you? Not residue, but if I don't keep it high enough off the floor, the carpet will get damp. But I don't see any residue. Mm. And uh, you know, kidding aside, uh, this room really wasn't that dry to begin with. That's just taking it over the top, right into perfect territory. It's not one of those humidifiers where I'm not in a situation in the studio where I've got to bring it up from 10 to 39. It's probably already 33 or 34 in here. That's just uh, if I'm being really honest, I could probably turn that off for some of the broadcasts. But it's just my habit of everywhere I have the Martins. Uh, we're making sure everything is, is in the right range. But uh, maybe if, if the room needs a lot more humidity and the humidifier is doing a lot more work, residue can happen, but it, it's not something we see here. Okay. And then upstairs in the in the main guitar rooms, like this is the, the basement studio at Mars Music, mm. in the upstairs area where the guitars are, we do have the big floor models with all the uh, filters and all the expense, and that's just a better way to do it up there. Yeah. No, it's the first time I got one of those. I, I do like it. See, in here right now, it's gone down from 50 to 45. So I think it's good that you're doing that because you're showing the customers that you that you that's that's important to you, right? I I turn mine off and take a slight risk, although it's still fine. But you you've got all those guitars there. You need to look after them. So I think it's it's a good it's a good thing. Um, Kuki says you can't clip the Colorado capo on the headstock, right? No, but, but Maury puts it behind the nut. Thomas Moore has the same humidifier. Works well. Cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, actually, it's funny you said that about... Yeah, that looks good, actually. Looks good on there. It's funny that you said that about the floor getting wet, because I noticed that with mine straight away. On the highest setting, uh, the floor was getting wet, so I reduced it by one. Yep. Sandy says, Maury, do you have the nails on your right hand long and pointed? No, I... They're <laughs> Very really personal like, right? question. <laughs> nope, I, I, I do like the sound of that. Those There are players that can get away with that. Uh, I never got used to doing that, and I never tried long enough to, to conform to it. But no, I, I don't have any nails. It's all bare finger pads you're hearing. Me too. I cut my... You, you ever cut your nails short and then play a three-hour gig and regret it because you get all that kind of bruising and soreness because the mm -hmm. nail's not there to quite protect the pads of your fingers? That happened to me yesterday. I was in agony for like 10 ah, minutes. And then it just went away. It sounded like that. <clears throat> Philip Watson, my humidifier goes almost 24 hours this time of year. Yeah, me too. The other day it was so dry, it was ridiculous. Yeah. So I had them all cranked and it was still dry. Uh, don't forget to do that. If you're not doing that now, then get on it. Make sure you're checking that humidity. Yeah, I also have yeah. a Venta humidifier. It's very nice and very quiet. Yeah, the one I got that like yours, Maury, is really quiet and it doesn't require any filters. So I, I really like it. I was going to do a review of it. I think it's, 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 it's such a boring topic, but it's so important. And those filters yeah. can get really expensive anyway. 
Um, oh, Mark says, use distilled water in your humidifier. If you have hard water or lime in your water, you might get residue. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, I guess the water in New York City is pretty good then. Okay, that's good to know. All right, awesome. So I caught up with the chat. So, yeah, so the guitar is really interesting. Um, a few questions for you then. Is it available left-handed? Yes, absolutely. It is. Okay, that's good to know. And there's no electronics in these series of guitars, right? So what if someone's watching, and in fact, this is a great question, uh, just to take a little time out. If I'm watching and I want to buy that guitar, but I want a pickup system in it, what can you offer a customer? Uh, In-house, we can actually uh, do the, the uh, trans audio amulet, whether it's the Phantom or the uh, uh, 9-volt version. We also installed the K&K Pure Mini. Uh, both of them are going to be bridge plate transducers, and they're both going to give you a good, a good sound that does hear the, uh, mm. the, the body, sen the body mm. sensor. Actually, yeah, that would be a great stage guitar for that reason, if you put that in Absolutely. there. Absolutely. We did a custom shop version of this guitar almost two years ago for a, cu a customer who made it into a jumbo, and it was mm. awesome. Just one of, the, one of the best customs we ever saw. We see a lot of custom shop that was just th this in a, in a basically in a J41 uh, you know, body size was amazing. Oh, so it was even more Gibson-y. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that... Um, oh, so what was I going to say? I thought, oh, yeah, what, which, uh, which case comes with that guitar? Uh... This might be a gig bag. This is probably that uh, the heavy padded gig bag, if I'm remembering right. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Very. Very interesting. All right. Let's never. Let's never got any more th uh, questions about this guitar, and then we're gonna go over and do our giveaway in a second. So uh, yeah, really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, just gonna get this ready. If you're in the USA, you can enter our giveaway. I'm gonna put the rules up on the screen right here. Okay. So we're going to put a random guitar. It's no longer the guitar we're talking about. So we're going to pick a random guitar. Don't worry, I'm going to post a link in the chat. Michael, thank you. Soft shell bag comes with that. I really like those Martin gig bags. They're cool. And again, if you're using it on stage, that's a good thing to have to carry it around with. So we're going to put a link in the chat to Maury's music to a guitar. And what you have to do is click that link. And then it says images. You must click on the images tab. Okay, so you click the link opens in your browser, then click on the images tab. Then you'll see two pictures of a guitar. They're the same picture, but there's one difference. And you have to tell me in the chat here, the exact difference. Do type in detail because I have the answer here from Maury and it has to match that answer very closely. And my decision is final, okay? So let's get ready for this. And then while I'm doing this, Maury's gonna play the guitar. And then once we get the winner, I shall sound the DJ air horn and that will indicate the winner. Okay, and then I'll come back to the chat when we've done that, okay? So just give me one second. I'm gonna grab the link from Maury here. Remember, you click the link and then you have to click on the images tab, okay? Otherwise, you won't see the pictures. Just gonna make sure I got it, yep. Okay, here we go. Good luck, everybody. Remember, only, only someone with a USA address lives in the USA can receive the strings. We cannot send them outside of the USA. And thank you to Maury so much for your generosity and for giving these away. Really, really appreciate it. And for anyone not entering, we will cut to Maury so he can play the guitar. Once we've got a winner, I shall step in and stop him. Sean says, I win, I win, I win. Well, we'll see, my friend. I'm now posting the link. Ready? <laughs> Three, <laughs> two, one, go. There you go. Click that link, click the images tab, find the exact difference and come and let me know. Maury, take it away.
<laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> hey, Maury, do you like that? Being interrupted by the DJ air horn. <laughs> I love it. Do it. <laughs> okay. So let me just clarify my answer here. To, to make sure I get it right the first time. Yes. Okay. Uh, FDNY8231. Third fret is missing the dot. I'll take that. That's the correct answer. You have won the prize. Congratulations. I'll give you a big round of applause. Please send... Let that fade out. <laughs> Please send your contact details to maury at maurysmusic.com. Send them over and Maury will send you a set of three Martin strings. And for anyone who didn't win, don't worry. We're doing the giveaway every week. So just join us again next week at 4 p.m. EST. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell here so it tells you when we go live. I'm also now posting the link a little bit earlier so you can see in your YouTube um, app that we're going live. But yeah, please do subscribe and ring the bell because that will notify you of when we're going live exactly. Um, at that time. And we also go live other times as well, so you can join us then. All right, we're going to go to the chat now. We've got open session, so send us your questions to discuss. We had a comment about the gig bag. Are you ready to discuss uh, gig bags versus hard shell cases? <laughs> your favorite topic. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> and in fact, our winner is it's had this um, this comment, which I totally, I totally respect. A $1,600 guitar, remember that is retail, and you don't, oh, whatever, the, that is list price. You don't get a hard shell case. Now I see this written quite a lot. Can I just give you my opinion on this On this, first of all? Um, we just said about humidity, right? You wanna keep your guitar in a hard shell case with a humidifier at this time of year. For that reason, I do think it's good to have a hard shell case. But I also think a guitar like this, like I said, is good for stage and I, I really, really don't like carrying around hard shell cases. I only use them at home for storage. So I'm kind of glad they give you a good quality gig bag. And I've had some reviews that I've made on guitars that cost $2,000 where people say, oh, it comes with a gig bag. But there is, there are gig bags and gig bags. You know, there's, there's soft cases and, there, and gig bags are different things. Don't forget that some hard shell cases can cost $300 and some really good gig bags or is that the right, or, or soft shell case gig bag can be up to $500, all right? I've got a Meridian that was like 350, I think. Really amazing, it must last me 10 years. It's amazing, I love it, I would never get rid of it. It's, it's still in, it still looks like new, it's amazing. And they, they're not around anymore either, but they're really great, great case. I use it for all my, all my shows. So that's my thought on it. I'm kind of indifferent. Yes, a hard shell case would be nice for storage in bad weather, but at the same time, the, the, the soft case is ideal for carrying around. And these Martin cases are really well made. They are great quality. And I like them because they don't sit too high on my back. So that's my take on it. What do you think about this in the chat? I'm interested to know. And Maury, um, as a dealer, what do you think about this statement about you know, why don't I get the hard shell case? And also, do you offer an upgrade option for a customer to get a hard shell case? Well, uh, answering in reverse order, if Martin makes a case for it, we always do offer you uh, the option to upgrade uh, from one case to a better case or from a gig bag to a case, or in some guitars that don't have a bag at all, uh, from nothing to a bag to a case. So we definitely have the covered there. If Martin has a case uh, or two or three, uh, when you buy a guitar from us, you can buy it with no upgrade or you can pay a small, uh, you know, basically a, a sale price to upgrade from the gig bag, if you don't take the gig, <clears throat> the gig bag, excuse me, uh, you can upgrade from that to a case and save a lot of money. Uh, my take on it is not unlike yours. Uh, being a dealer, I don't necessarily have more of a, uh, a line on exactly why Martin does something, and I certainly won't speak for them, but I have to figure if Martin can bring this guitar to market at this price with the gig bag, they could have done something where they charged $175 more and giving you a case, and then some those same people could be saying, this guitar is priced two hundred dollars too high. It's just a math thing, and and I think Martin must have had a lot of meetings where they decided we can bring this guitar uh, without a case, with a, an inexpensive case, or with a, a hard shell case. And I really think they found a sweet spot where they saved you money by going with a soft case, but it still is a case. It's you, you can throw the word gig bag around. But it's not a bag per se, because some gig bags are just that, a bag. It's just a dust cover. This is a hard line foam interior protective 
a soft case. So if you could, you know, a gig bag is down here. A soft case is better than that. And then a hard shell case. It's a soft shell, a soft case is still a case. So I think it's just economics. I wouldn't be surprised if they consider bringing this to market for a couple hundred bucks more and giving you a case. And uh, which segment does Martin want to get upset? The the ones that that went this way, or they they might have priced themselves out of. Uh, you know, really connecting you with this guitar if they made you buy an inexpensive case. I get some people asking me once in a while, you know, can I buy a guitar and you keep the case and save me some money? So it depends where you want to put the, your funds. But I, th that's my take, and, and it's it's not any more important than your take. And if, if you guys have different opinions, uh, don't don't let my opinion weigh any more heavily just because I'm a dealer. Because I, I have as much clout as you do when it comes to what is Martin doing with their decisions. Um, yeah, you know, I might sell these guitars, but I don't have anything to do with uh, the people that make the decisions. So it's it's just, I really just think it's economics, frankly. Yeah, I see it happening a lot now with like Fender and even PRS. The Silver Sky was coming in a soft case, and oh. I think I think cost. I don't know. I know nothing about how these decisions are made, but it must be, it must be something to do with cost, mustn't it? Because obviously to ship. A guitar in a hard shell case is more expensive than for them to ship it in a soft case. I guess I, I'm. I don't know. This is a tough one. Like like I said, for storing right now, for storing them right now, I think the hard shell case is essential. If you want to carry a hard shell case to, if you drive and you want to take the guitar in that case to a, a gig or something, I totally understand that. The only reason I keep talking about gig bags personally is because I live in New York City and I take the subway a lot, so it wouldn't even be possible. For me to take a guitar in a hard shell case, I just couldn't do it. I have to take cables, mic stand, and all these things on a train. So yes, the Meridian bag I have is amazing. It's like a really thick, like almost like having a duvet around the guitar. It's 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 it's. it's I've never had knock on wood. I've never had any damage from that case. It's absolutely amazing. Of course, it's not as protected as it is in a hard um, hard case. I just can't um, carry those things around. You know, one thing I personally don't. I'm not a fan of actually, funnily enough, is the really expensive custom shop style cases. The, for me, they're too, they're just too bulky, they're too heavy. <laughs> Even take them out of this closet to open them up to get a guitar out is, I, I just don't like it. I like the kind of medium, the ones that come with the standard series, I like that. They're, for me, they're protective enough and they're still light enough to, to kind of move around even the apartment. And um, it's a funny story, like every day I look in our, in our lounge, in our living room, there's a um, there's a scratch and that came from one of those cases because of the the bottom scraped along the tile. Aww. So like for me they're just too much. Again personally for me they're just too much. I like the ones that come with the standard series and I like a really good gig bag. And I'm I'm very disappointed that Meridian don't make those cases anymore because it's just been amazing to me for the last ten years. I've had that for almost ten years now. Used it all wow. around the city. And again, knock on wood, I've never had an issue. But I totally get the thing about the hard, the, the, the hard case. I guess for me, this is the way I look at it, I guess. You might give me a $300 hard shell case with the guitar, and I might then go out and buy a $350 gig bag for it from someone like Mono, that's you know, the, the one of those really expensive cases. So for me, it's, just not, it's not like the hard shell cases are more expensive than the gig bags. They can be... One can be more expensive than the other. So for me, it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, I guess it's a personal thing. It just depends what you want to store your guitar in, right? Yeah. And to that point, may maybe we're both wrong. Maybe Martin doesn't save money giving you a bag. Maybe they could have given us a case and the and the reasoning is just not on target at all. And I really don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure it has it obviously has to do with cost. Like I said, why don't Apple give you a charger in the iPhone box anymore? It's because now the box has gone from this to this. They can now ship twice as many iPhones for the same price it would cost them to ship uh. half as many iPhones. That's the reason. Uh, whether you agree with that or not is a whole, a whole other video. But um, Thomas Moore says, I like the plastic Martin cases. Me too. They're the ones that I really like. I like those a lot. But again, I can't carry that around the city myself. If I was driving, maybe. But I'm not driving to most of my gigs. I'm not, well, I'm not playing any gigs right now. It doesn't really matter. Um, hey, Maury, if people are upgrading... Okay, good question. If people are upgrading from a soft case to a hard shell case, does that mean you have some of those cool soft cases for sale? Do you sell the Martin soft cases? Um, 
yeah, to answer that, we, we must, and, and that's a funny thing. We, um, we're moving into a bigger building really, really slowly. It's taken four years now, but the only thing that building is good for right now is, is extra storage. So we have a lot of boxes there, a lot of gig bags from other manufacturers, and uh, a lot of you know plastic cases if somebody upgraded to a guy. We don't sell those gig bags as a product, I don't think, uh, but there must be at least two or three laying around. Um, so it's something we could look into, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if I went looking in, in the other building. There's got to be at least a couple of these blue soft shell cases from the time somebody did upgrade. Michael says, I can't believe these soft shell cases are that less expensive than some of the cheap cases Martin uses, like the plastic one. Yeah, who kn well, but my point earlier was, so, okay, so Maury will go there and pick these guitars up, right? If they're sending them to a dealer in, in California, they're having to distribute them in a big truck. So I guess my point, my point was they can fit more guitars of less weight without the cases to ship them out west than if they're, if, if they're in lighter cases. I don't know. I, I, that's just a guess I have. Uh, I still, I'm, just, I'm just guessing. I don't know. I might be wrong. Ironically, it's, it's really the, the size and the, and the balloon. I forget what, they, what term they call it, but the balloon dimensions of the box is so big, whether it's 12 pounds or 16 pounds or 9 pounds, the box has taken up that much room on the FedEx truck, so no, they, really, and that's oh. part of the argument too. We would love to sell cases and gig bags more often than we do, but it costs us just as much money to ship a case to Aaron as it would to ship a case with a guitar in it, which you're going to buy a guitar for $3,000. You know, We're going to eat the shipping for, say, 40 bucks. If you're going to buy a case from us for $100 and we eat the shipping for 40 now we've only sold the case for 60 so it really makes it lopsided, and that's why our store, our bigger retail building, is just massing up this, uh, amassing this really big collection of cases because we're not a, a local store now that, that can have walk-ins. If anybody in our area is, is uh, interested in buying 75 to 100 cases at a discount <laughs> after the pandemic's over, uh, we, it's, we have it set up. It's just we, we can't really move these cases without the, the shipping expense. Hmm, interesting. Thomas Moore says the PRS soft cases are very nice. That's my point. That's my point. I've seen soft cases that can cost so much money because I just I just want to get the point across that soft cases are not necessarily cheap and badly made and hard shell cases are well made. You know there's I did some research into humidity. There's some hard shell cases where people have put the mist inside them to see how they trap the humidity and it leaks right out the sides. So there are there you know I could put I could put a guitar with a you know a plastic bag around it and trap the humidity in, and put it in one of my really good soft cases, and it might trap humidity in better than in a really badly made hard shell case with uh, gaps in it. So I'm just I'm just uh, I'm just trying to be difficult right now, to be honest with you. I'm just trying to put some different um, perspectives out there that yeah. I've researched myself. But I yeah. do think there's two ways to look at it. I, I guess my point is the minute I reviewed the Acoustasonic, everyone said. The, all the comments were saying, oh man, $2,000 and they give you a soft case because I called it a gig bag, but I think I undersold it. I think I should have said a high quality padded gig, you know, um, soft shell case. Yeah. Sounds very different to, oh, you get, a, you get a, a nice gig bag with it. I think gig bag sounds like what you have when you're learning guitar at school and it's like about to rip apart into, into you know, I, I think, yeah, no. I think that's, that's, that's what I wanted to clear up with that. Um, people are saying it's, it's safer to pack it in your car. I agree with that. But again, I just personally, if I do pack it in a, in a cab or a car, I'm just really careful with it. But I totally get it. Yeah, I, you know, I've had a I've had a mixer fall out of a of a, of a cab because the guy pulled it oh, out oh, and, it, and it hit the floor. Yeah, I have, of course. I guess it, yeah, it depends. It's it's very it's very unique, isn't it? It's like, do you drive? Do you pack the car yourself? Do you handle the gear yourself? I mean, if you're doing the kind of gig where the, the, the people there want to help you load your car at the end, <laughs> of course, you know, they could slam that soft case against the wall. So I, to <laughs> I totally get it. I'm just saying there's yeah. definitely uses for both. And my use is very unique. Living in a city like New York, taking public transport, well, of, of, you know, not in 2020, but going out and taking public transport to gigs and things, having to take a mic stand, a guitar and a bag of cables on the subway is really not an easy thing to do, and that's why I would do that. But this, I mean, we could talk about this all day long. It's a very, um, it's very uh, use case. I think the best thing actually is to have both, 
because I think for storing in, in, in the dry weather, the hard shell case, a good hard shell case, is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Um, but I don't know why they do that. But I'm just going to guess it's a cost thing because this uh, is not a standard series guitar. I'll be quite surprised if they start giving soft cases with standard series guitars. Although, who knows? Maybe they will. Mm. And then, uh, again, that would, I would base my decision on what is that case like? What's the quality of that case like? You're making me laugh when you said about dropping a mixer out of a cab. I was in a band uh, years and years ago where somebody at the end of it was a block party outside and somebody was going to help us tear everything down. So he went to the mixer, to the snake, and he ripped out 24 mic cables without doing any of the, the push the latch before it comes out. He just tore the microphone cables out of the snake and ruined the entire snake and 24 cables. <laughs> uh... Hang on, I always lose my place here. Da, 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 da. Oh, I had a Reunion Blues and a Mono side by side and sent the Mono back. It seemed way less protective than compared to the Reunion bru uh, Blues. Yeah, I haven't, oh. I haven't compared them. I, I found this Meridian. Again, I wanted something really soft and light and yet protective. And I found these and I just never had a problem in eight or eight or ten years with it. It's been absolutely amazing. They don't make them anymore. But essentially, it is just a big, like, thick kind of like duvet around the guitar. So I get it. It's not as protected as some other cases. I hear great things about Reunion, uh, Re Reunion Blues and Mono, but I have not compared them yet. But I guess I'll have to when I have to get when, when it's time to get a new case. Oh, my electric guitar is in the Mono, and it has that boot on the bottom. So if you drop it, it kind of like it won't break because it hits the bottom. Oh. And also, the guitar goes in from the top because on those other cases where you zip it from the bottom. Sometimes I was going to a uh, luthier here and he said, I don't like those cases because people will throw them on their backs and walk out of here and the, and the guitar will just fall through the back of the case onto the floor. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, Ugh. wow, guitar cases. Who would have thought that's such a big topic, right? <laughs> um, I think it sounds cheap to give a soft case. Yeah, well, you know, I guess the truth is this is a more affordable Martin. So they have to, they have to make some cuts somewhere. So yeah. I guess that, you know, if you get the standard series, you, you'll get the, the, hard, the hard case. Um, Jack Wickwire likes the Reunion Blues gig bag. I have to check these out. I just haven't had a need to look into gig bags, but it'd be a good thing to investigate in the new year. Uh, Bemo says, damp it, humidifies the instrument and seals water vapor in with its clear plastic sound hole plug. Yeah, damp it's are excellent for sealing it in, especially if your guitar's really dry. Uh, there's a good video with Bob Taylor where he uses those to bring a guitar back to life again. That, that's, why, that's why I hung on to some of those as well. Um, cool. again, again, be careful with humidity. Do not get your guitar wet while you're doing that. Kuki says the answer is to buy a Relic guitar and use a gig bag. That's not a bad um, idea either. <laughs> and uh, is Reunion Blues the brand with the YouTube guitar dropping videos? I think it is, yeah. They throw the guitar off the roof. Oh again, God. again, try I need, I need a thing on the screen at all times. Try at your own discretion. <laughs> <laughs> Marco says that the hard cases start from the 15 series. So that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, but they don't progress past the 17s. That's, that's what's weird. It's not necessarily just ascending. Mm. So what did you say? Series get them, but the, I'm sorry, the 16 and 17s don't. So what did you say? I was distracted earlier. I, I had a comment come in. Um, if I buy a guitar like that, can I buy a hard shell case from you as well or not? If Martin offers it, yes, you can. In most cases, they will. And they do. Okay. So if I need that for, for storing at home and stuff, I can get one of those as well. Okay. Yep. But I cannot buy the Martin gig bag from you, right? They don't sell those separately. Right. But uh, I forget who was asking. It might have been Chris. We might have some of them left over oh. because we've done upgrades for customers. And when the guitar goes out in a case, the, the, the soft case stays here. So technically, if I can find where I, where I stored them, we can sell them. But I, I probably have less than three or four of them here, mm. um, which means I don't know if it's technically a product on our website. Somebody calls me at 6 o'clock tonight to buy that. It might not be in our system per se, but we probably can do that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I have one for that reason. A friend of mine took one of my guitars back to England and... That guitar had the soft case, and I, this, this will attest to how good they are. I said to him, can I keep the case? And so he went out and got a different case to take it back, which, which was actually better because he was flying. 
So it made more sense for him to get a cheap hard case anyway, in case they wanted to put it in the plane. But he could have taken that soft case and put it in as hand luggage, which is probably safer anyway. But I said to him, I like that case. Can I keep the case if you're not going to use it back home? And he said, yes. So I have one of those myself. I think, I think they're really good cases. Um, there's also an argument about not using a branded case because then people know you have a Martin in there as well. So <laughs> that's another, that's another yeah. conversation to have. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm glad we got the whole case thing out the way because it is a very important thing and it ties in with humidity as well and storing the guitar in bad weather. But again, just because it's a hard shell case doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, generally it means it's safer, but it doesn't mean it's trapping in humidity. Do check it, do test it, do use like the, um, the thing I reviewed for you, Maury, the um, Theodario Humiditrack goes inside oh, yeah, yeah. the case. Mine is still in the case right now. I could actually go on there and check what the humidity is in that case right now. I'm going to do it now. And it's still in the case. Um, so you can actually see what's happening inside that case. That's the time to use it. Mine says it is 44% right now. So... Yeah, a little bit low, not right. bad. Then again, the case is out in the other room, so maybe it's dried out slightly. But yeah, 44 in this kind of dry weather is pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do, do, do. A little bit of talk about price. I always say on this show, if you're interested in buying this guitar, just call Maury and ask him about stuff like that and any questions. And I think that's the best way to proceed. So I think I've been really happy with this, Maury. I, I like this guitar. I'm actually... I like it more than I thought I would. Some of these guitars kind of fly under my radar and I hear good things about them, but I never actually get to um, try them. And from the first strum of the intro, this guitar sounded really good. Um, give us any last questions before we wrap it up. I wanted to ask Maury what he got for his holiday gifts, but if you're gonna ask us questions, I won't be able to. Uh, Philip Watson <laughs> says, Maury, when I pre-order my Modern Deluxe D18, Wow. Are you getting the one with the pickup? I like that pickup system. Very good. Um, will it really be April before I get it? So I guess you're saying on your website that the, the Modern Deluxe D18 is are coming in April. So is there any chance that might come in earlier? Well, the, there's excited. there's as much, <laughs> a, as much of a chance it'll come in early as it'll come in late. And really, this oh. is the... Uh, wet blanket part of the of the broadcast oh. martin is four and a half months behind schedule demand has skyrocketed they're they're telling us there's some guitars who won't get until next winter and, and like what's just the reality like what? of it like what uh, i'd have to i'd have to look and see um but there Ooh. there are we put we put gigantic orders in for guitars ever i mean all the time anyway you know last year this this year there are some situations where we p probably placed an order a month ago and we got the uh the ver order verification report, I think they call it, and Lori and I are looking at each other. Do they mean 2020? Because that, you know, there's there's some guitars 11 months out. So April is the best ETA we have right now. Uh, the downside is if somebody buys that, you know, while we're on air now, that might be the one we're getting in April, and then the next allocation is going to be after that. So, it, you know, it's it's a moving target, and sometimes dealers will cancel. We'll get bumped up in line a little bit, um, but. As far as we can tell by by checking regularly with Martin, April is accurate, and it's that's unfortunate. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not making I'm not um, making light of the situation. Martin are working really really hard to catch up. They were obviously shut down for a while, like we all were, and they're working very hard to catch up with demand again. And just just imagine how much demand there is. We're not just. I always think about Maury Maury store and the American dealers. Martin are making guitars for the whole world. And uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty impressive that they are where it's, it's, it's impressive that you have any guitars at all, Maury, because obviously, obviously they're behind and um, doing their best to keep up. And I, I take my hat off to them. And I guess if you see a guitar you're interested in, it's just a reason to grab it because you might have to wait, uh, which is fine, but you might have to wait. So uh, well, to put it in perspective, I'm sorry to interrupt. Some of the fine. guitars we have now were ordered 10 months ago. We're not we're not stocking uh, stuff now that we just asked for in 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 July. Some of this stuff is just you know we've th thank God we put big orders in long before. So it's it's just, uh, just what it is. It, it stinks. Okay, so these guitars I'm looking on your site now. These guitars that are coming in um, are not guitars you ordered like three months ago after we got locked down. These are orders you've had in for for a while. 
in most cases, there's, there's going to be exceptions, but a lot of the stuff we have coming in is fulfilling orders we placed long before March, yeah. Mm. Yeah, someone said they're hiring for a second, they're hiring right now for second shift. Yeah, it must, it must be really tough. Um, it must be really tough for everyone. And there's so many products right now that I'm seeing on all the websites that are, that are back ordered. Uh, there's also been talk of some other things that happened. Um, I think a factory was damaged and things like that. Not Martin, but other products. So there's with 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 with, with 2020 and things like that as well. There's just so much. I'm, you know, it's it's amazing that they're keeping up. And a lot of people are buying guitars to learn guitar right now because they they've got time to to learn. I guess so. It is what it is what it is. But um, yeah, I mean that's interesting to know. So Philip, your guitar could come in early or it could come in late but it will certainly be worth the wait. So you haven't pre-ordered yet, Philip. So my advice to you is to pre-order it soon then. So you get one of the first ones that comes in. And thank you for your interest either way. I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Roeth says, which Martin case is the best to seal humidity? Now, I haven't done a test, and I'm not saying that they don't seal humidity, but I've heard of people testing some cases that don't do it as well as others. I guess that was my point. Um, I've not had any problem with the, like I said, I like the plastic one. I've not had any problem with them. I've not had any guitars have any, any, any issues. This case that I just told you about with the 44% is actually the, which case is that? That's the OMJM case, which is a um, custom shop case. So that's, that's a good one. Um, and that's the Guy 500 style. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't. I guess I could. I could test the other ones. I could put that um, Diodario Bluetooth meter in the cases and see which one keeps the best humidity. That could be a good video for the future. Thank you for that oh, idea. Yeah. That's actually a great idea because it's so boring and yet it's so important to care <laughs> for these guitars. I totally agree with that, of course. And I think I I, I talk about humidity way too much. Because I don't want people's guitars to break. It sucks, and and it can be a, a, an expensive repair, especially here in New York. It can be very expensive to have it repaired. And prevention is better than the. What's the Frank? What's the saying? Cure. <laughs> the cure. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm trying to do two things at once here. I would love a VTSD28. That sounds like that'd be a custom shop. Very nice. The, uh, yeah. The Martin backlog is very real. Yes, it is. Kuki says, where I live, it's impossible to get a new Martin. All the big European dealers are sold out for months. Yeah. Wow. Um, I guess, yeah, and shipping as well. And now, and now there's other stuff going on over there too. So I guess like even like the, the, the trucks taking stuff around and getting slowed down by everything that's happening. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Maury has a lot of left-handed models. Yes, he does. He has a lot of left-handed guitars as well. <laughs> that, was a that, was a, that was a joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> my local music store has zero Martins on the wall. I've never seen that happen. I've been buying there since the 80s. Is that in the USA, Mark? Wow. The baked one. Yeah, the VTS is the, is the baked top. Very cool. Very cool. So I want to just finish up. Um, this is our last show of 2020. It's been quite a year for everyone. And uh, this has been amazing for me. It's kept me sane. So I want to just thank Maury for doing this for me because this I, I just love talking about guitars. I love thank the you. I love the community that we have and our friends and the chat is just awesome. And I want to do this in 2021 if you'll allow us to. And all we need you to do is tune in on Mondays, watch and chat away. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to ask you now just to check that you have subscribed to the channel and ring the bell rung the bell and also go and subscribe to Maury's music as well and ring his bell because then you'll see when he goes live and shows off the guitars he's just picked up as well yep. so um, just before we finish uh, Maury did you get anything good for the holidays how did you spend it were you with family uh, we uh, we've been socially distancing so it's been tough we uh, my mm. wife and I stayed home we, we FaceTime with our family uh, we're uh, you know not to get depressive but we we really had a kind of you know, hunker down and, and not uh, mix it up with a lot of people just to be on the safe side. Not that, uh, I mean, it was heartbreaking to, I got to see my nephews and my niece uh, in the car across the, the road. Uh, it's uh, It was a really nice, safe time, and we really look forward to having a, a real serious celebration when we can, you know, all, all do it safely. 
Um, but musically, uh, Aaron and I uh, are admittingly geeking out on, on the live streaming. I got an air turn Bluetooth pedal uh, for Christmas, and I spent seven hours Christmas Day fighting and screaming at it because I don't know how to use MIDI yet. And I finally got that thing working yesterday afternoon. So uh, I, I got some gear that makes this, this whole live streaming more fun after you go through the gigantic uh, hurdle of learning how to use it. So now um, what I can do is I can... And, and um, close friends of mine said, that's what you should get good at first, muting. So I, I have a mute pedal now <laughs> at my foot. How about you, Aaron? I actually, yeah, I got an interface uh, which is for mobile, so I can use it with my iPad for the apps. It's got really, really, really low latency. So I could use it with my computer, but I can also uh -huh. use it with the iPad app. Because I was doing a series of videos about iPad apps for musicians. So you can yeah. plug it in, it powers it, and I can use that remotely to do stuff. I might revisit that at some point. But I can also use it with the computer. Although, knock on wood, this computer is working really well, and I say if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. So that's that's uh, that's fine. I'm excited for January because, like we said last week, NAM is going virtual, and there's going to be new stuff. Obviously, you have to think with the fact that we're you know uh, companies are kind of behind anyway with their um, products um, inventory. You have to think there won't be that many new things, but I'm pretty sure NAM week there'll be some new stuff around because you know, it's NAM and, they're, they're, and they're, they're doing it virtually, so there should be. So that week I'm planning on going live quite a lot to cover that because I always go to that, the NAM show and that's one of the highlights of my year to be around all those awesome people and friends and the yeah. companies and trying things. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed, of course, I know, I know we can't do that. I'm disappointed not to see my friends out there this year. But the way I'm going to substitute that is to go live a lot. Maybe if, if there are a lot of announcements, I'll go live every day just to talk through what's been released wow. and my thoughts on it. So I feel like I'm cool. there. So that will be coming up at the end of the month. And um, <laughs> Kuki said, I also screamed against my Airturn BT200 4S. I had a Boss RC5 Novation Launchpad Pro, learned to use it, and a pedal power supply. Oh, you got lots of music stuff. Cool. Yeah, I have the RC500. Yep, yep. Um, is the shop even open online audio? Are you talking about Maury's music? Maury's music is not open for visitors. That's why, we, why, that's why Maury's doing a lot of live streaming now. But he is taking orders online, of course. So you can uh, yep. order. But like I said, just give him a call. Best way to do it is, to, is always to give Maury a call on the phone. Tell him what you're looking for and discuss it with him on the phone uh, to get that personal experience. Right, Maury? Or, or email, whatever you prefer. Oh, okay. Or impersonal with the email. <laughs> Um, I want to see that SC13 E neck in the standard series guitar. Me too. The question is, Chris, will this will 20 will 2021 be the year we see the SC28 E if such a thing exists, or will it be like the Sasquatch with Bob and a mere <laughs> a mere myth? <laughs> and before we go, we forgot to do something very important. Yes, that's right. I was talking. Yeah, Maury's music. Give him an email or a phone call and go check his website for latest um, inventory. Maury, we didn't sniff the sound hole of the guitar. For our new friends, we'd like to sniff the sound hole. The guitar yesterday had no smell, very disappointed. The Martin guitar is known for a wonderful aroma. So to finish up, does this guitar smell like whiskey? Let's have a, let's have a try. <laughs> How would I know that? This guitar smells like a D18, frankly. Oh, okay. I was kind of hoping for the whiskey, but uh, I can't, you can't have everything, right? <laughs> that, that's later. That, that's in an hour. <laughs> and the final disclaimer, do not pour whiskey into your Martin guitar. That's really not a good idea. Pour it into um, your mouth. Kuki wishes for the 00018E back in 2021. Actually, that could be a good episode next year. New Year resolutions and guitars that you'd like to see in 2021. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We shall see. Um, everyone says Happy New Year. Happy New Year from us. Um, Maury and myself will be going live separately, I'm sure, throughout the week. Uh, Maury with his guitars and me with some videos. And I might go live and do some songs this week. I haven't decided yet. So again, just ring that bell so you're told when it happens. FDNY says, I love that smell. Yep, we all do. That's why I created <laughs> the Sound Hole Sniffer merchandise. There you go. Support the channel. Get yourself a mug or a t-shirt. You can be just like me and Maury. Um, Roweth, does the open pour increase the smell? That's for next time. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up. This has been a great episode. Thank you, everyone, for your continued support. 
Happy New Year! Can't wait. We're going to see you next Monday in 2021. Can you believe it? It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned. Do me a favor. Tell your guitar playing friends about us. Have them come and join us and hang out and join the party. We'll see you in 2021. Can't wait for it. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and be well. Happy New Year. Thank you.